Thank you. All right. That's a great audience. Oh, wonderful. So we're going to talk today about creativity. And what is creativity? That's one of those things that we, we start to ask ourselves and we say, well, I, I, I kind of know it when I see it, I guess. I, I don't know. You're, you're starting to think of like Einstein, messy hair, or Pablo Picasso, or these great unreachable geniuses. But uh, we've all got creativity that we can find in ourselves, right? That's something that is, is part of our lives. And I think that's something that we, we can explore a little bit. I think we get afraid of it. We, we think that somehow to be creative, we have to be these superhumans. But for the rest of us mortals, I think that we can find a way to, to access this for ourselves, OK? So um, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about myself and how I found my own path. And we can kind of see how that might have some relevance to you guys. I grew up in Los Alamos, New Mexico, a scientific community. Um, that's the place where they built the atomic bomb. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of really brilliant minds in Los Alamos, New Mexico, um, let me tell you that. And uh, very scientific minds. The scientific mind and the artistic mind are similar in some ways, but the scientific and the artistic careers, they're not. And so when I was growing up, the idea of being a musician uh, was something that you kind of did on the weekends and the, uh, and the evenings after you're done with work. So for me, as I was kind of this bizarre little kid, you know, <laughs> practicing my clarinet and saying, hey, this is, this is something I, I like doing. People would say, that's really great, but, you know, that's not going to be how you make your living, right? <laughs> I didn't know better. I thought, sure, I, I, I'll do this. I'm going to put myself into this. And so I practiced, and I, you know, on lunch hours, I'd be practicing my instrument. I'd get up early in the morning. Um, you could ask my parents. They got really tired of hearing that. <laughs> and I, that was what I really put myself into. Um, it it kind of made me a little bit of a weird kid, you know? <laughs> Why don't you go outside and play football? Look at me. I'm not a football player, but uh, that, was, that was the thing that was a burning passion for me. Uh, from really the, the moment that I first started playing this piece of wood. So um, we've all got something like that, that as we're kids can maybe make us a little bit strange or a little bit unusual. I mean, maybe some of you were never strange kids, but, but I was. So, um, and so I want you just to, to think about that for a second. I want us to, to close your eyes. Let's all take a moment, close our eyes. Now, think of a goal that you wanted to undertake, but never did. And now think about why. Why did you not pursue that goal? Was it something that maybe you couldn't help? I wanted to be an underwear model. That didn't happen. <laughs> but maybe yours is a little bit more attainable. So then, OK, think. What were the things that got in the way? Get past all of those things that, that you know, you know are, are sort of excuses to the real reason. Now open your eyes again. How many people had some kind of fear in there? Yeah, right? We're afraid that someone's going to tell us, you can't do that. You can't be a professional basketball player. Dude, you're not even six foot tall. You can't do it. That's the thing we hear outside, and that's the thing we hear inside. I heard that growing up. You can't be a professional musician. Musicians don't make money. But I have a really wonderful quote I keep in my mind. Um, my father-in-law, Mark Munger, uh, always told Lisa growing up, never do or don't do something just because of the money. That's important. That was something that I felt growing up. I was very lucky to have supportive parents. Um, they wanted to have a well-adjusted scientist for a son, not a musician. But if I said I'm going to be a musician, they were going to be behind that. They were going to support that. It wasn't for the money. And I was really lucky. I didn't have those fears. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. I didn't worry whether I was going to be able to do what I wanted to do. And so think of that for yourself. What is that goal? Is that, is that something that, that you've never 
stepped into because you're thinking, I can't do it. I shouldn't do it. I won't do it. Maybe that goal is, is not creating a piece of art. We think about creativity as painting or, or being an architect or maybe even you know, being a Nobel physicist. It doesn't have to be any of those things. It could be stepping into a real, authentic version of yourself. Find that, be that, embody that for yourself, and live that. Everything else is going to follow right from there. And that's what I felt for myself at, as a high school kid. I'm like, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to play music. And people say, OK, that's cool. All right, you'll go join a symphony, and, and that kind of thing. But then, as a high school senior, I heard this amazing performance by clarinetist composer Eric Mandat. He made the most unbelievable sounds on the clarinet. And I said, whoa, I want to do that. OK, how do I do that? Well, I went up to him after the performance. I said, what were you doing? That's cool. And so he showed me some of these little techniques which I'm going to show you right now. Uh, they're called extended techniques on the clarinet. The normal way you play the clarinet is just nice, you know, fine, good sounds. But he said, let me show you some of these other things that you can do. You can play more than one note at a time on the clarinet called multiphonics. You can play notes that are in between the notes on the piano. Those are called microtones. You can sing while you're playing. And my favorite, you can keep on playing sounds while you're breathing in through your nose. It's called circular breathing. I can do that all day. <laughs> Unfortunately, you guys would really not want to hear that. So uh, I'll just do it for a little bit of time. In this piece that I first heard as a high school senior by Eric Mandat, I'm going to play a little bit of it for you right now. The piece is called Folk Songs. And I'm going to play the third movement, which has a very evocative title, expansive, as if hurtling through space. And you're going to get to hear a little bit of each of those techniques. And I promise you, it's on purpose. I'm not messing up, really.
Thank you guys so much. Enjoy your day.